Thomas the Apostle, Biblical Hebrew, Tums Kedos Coptic, Classical Syriac, Tum Shlai Toma Shlia, also called Didymus, which means the twin, was one of the twelve apostles of Jesus, according to the New Testament. He is informally referred to as Doubting Thomas, because he doubted Jesus' resurrection when first told in the Gospel of John account only, followed later by his confession of faith, my Lord and my God, on seeing Jesus wounded body. Traditionally, he is believed to have traveled outside the Roman Empire to preach the gospel, traveling as far as Tamilicum which are the states of Tamil Nadu and Kerala in present-day India. According to tradition, Thomas reached Muziris, modern-day North Paravar and Kodingalur in the state of Kerala, India in AD 50 and baptized several people, founding what today are known as St. Thomas Christians or Martoma Nachanis. After his death, the reputed relics of St. Thomas the Apostle were enshrined as far as Mesopotamia in the 3rd century, and later moved to various places. In 1258, some of the relics were brought to Abruzzo in Ortona, Italy, where they have been held in the Church of St. Thomas the Apostle. He is often regarded as the patron saint of India, and the name Toma remains quite popular among St. Thomas Christians of India. <laughs> Gospel of John. Topic. Thomas first speaks in the Gospel of John. In John chapter 11 verse 16, when Lazarus had recently died, the apostles do not wish to go back to Judea, where some Jews had attempted to stone Jesus. Thomas says, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Niv. He speaks again in John chapter 14 verse 5. There, Jesus had just explained that he was going away to prepare a heavenly home for his followers, and that one day they would join him there. Thomas reacted by saying, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Niv. John chapter 20 verses 24 to 29 tells how doubting Thomas was skeptical at first when he heard that Jesus had risen from the dead and appeared to the other apostles, saying, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. V. 25. But when Jesus appeared later and invited Thomas to touch his wounds and behold him, Thomas showed his belief by saying, My Lord and my God, v. 28 Jesus then said, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed, v. 29. Topic. Names and etymologies Topic. The name Thomas coined Greek, Thomas given for the Apostle in the New Testament is derived from the Aramaic or Classical Syriac, tum toma, equivalently from Hebrew tium, meaning twin. The equivalent term for twin in Greek, which is also used in the New Testament, is didymos didymos. Other names The Nag Hammadi copy of the Gospel of Thomas begins. These are the secret sayings that the living Jesus spoke and Didymos, Judas Thomas, recorded." Early Syrian traditions also relate the Apostle's full name as Judas Thomas. Some have seen in the Acts of Thomas written in East Syria in the early 3rd century, or perhaps as early as the first half of the 2nd century an identification of Saint Thomas with the Apostle Judas, son of James, better known in English as Jude. However, the first sentence of the Acts follows the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles in distinguishing the Apostle Thomas and the Apostle Judas son of James. Others, such as James Tabor, identify him as Judah, the brother of Jesus mentioned by Mark. In the Book of Thomas the Contender, part of the Nag Hammadi, he is alleged to be a twin to Jesus. Now, since it has been said that you are my twin and true companion, examine yourself. A doubting Thomas is a skeptic who refuses to believe without direct personal experience. A reference to the Apostle Thomas, due to his refusal to believe the resurrected Jesus had appeared to the ten other apostles, until he could see and feel the wounds received by Jesus on the cross. Topic. Feast days Topic. When the Feast of St. Thomas was inserted in the Roman calendar in the 9th century, it was assigned to 21 December. 
The Martyrology of Saint Jerome mentioned the Apostle on 3 July, the date to which the Roman celebration was transferred in 1969, so that it would no longer interfere with the major ferial days of Advent. 3 July was the day on which his relics were translated from Mylapore, a place along the coast of the Marina Beach, Chennai Madras, in India, to the city of Edessa in Mesopotamia. Traditionalist Roman Catholics who follow the general Roman calendar of 1960 or earlier and many Anglicans including members of the Episcopal Church as well as members of the Church of England and the Lutheran Church, who worship according to the 1662 edition of the Book of Common Prayer, still celebrate his feast day on 21 December. However, most modern liturgical calendars including the Common Worship Calendar of the Church of England prefer 3 July. The Eastern Orthodox and Byzantine Catholic churches celebrate his feast day on the 6th of October. For those churches which follow the traditional Julian calendar, the 6th of October currently falls on the 19th of October of the modern Gregorian calendar. In addition, the next Sunday of the Easter, Pascha, is celebrated as the Sunday of Thomas in commemoration of Thomas's question to Jesus, which led him to proclaim, according to orthodox teaching, two natures of Jesus, both human and divine. Thomas is commemorated in common with all of the other apostles on the 30th of June, the 13th of July, in a feast called the Synaxis of the Holy Apostles. He is also associated with the Arabian or Arapet icon of the Theotokos, Mother of God, which is commemorated on the 6th of September, the 19th of September. The Malankara Orthodox Church celebrates his feast on three days, the 3rd of July in memory of the relic translation to Edessa, the 18th of December the day he was lanced, and the 21st of December when he died. <laughs> Later history and traditions the passing of Mary, adjudged heretical by Pope Gelasius I in 494, was attributed to Joseph of Arimathea. The document states that Thomas was the only witness of the Assumption of Mary into heaven. The other apostles were miraculously transported to Jerusalem to witness her death. Thomas was left in India, but after her first burial, he was transported to her tomb, where he witnessed her bodily Assumption into heaven, from which she dropped her girdle. In an inversion of the story of Thomas, doubts, the other apostles are skeptical of Thomas's story until they see the empty tomb and the girdle. Thomas' receipt of the girdle is commonly depicted in medieval and pre-Tridentine Renaissance art, the Apostle's infamous doubting reduced to a metaphorical knot in the Bavarian Baroque Mary Untire of Knots. Mission in India Thomas is traditionally believed to have sailed to India in AD 50 but there is evidence of his being in Taxila in AD 43, where he did not have success to spread the Christian faith, and is believed to have landed at the port of Muziris, modern-day North Paravur and Kodingalore in modern-day Kerala state where there was a Jewish community at the time. The port was destroyed in 1341 by a massive flood that realigned the coasts. He is believed by the St. Thomas Christian tradition to have established seven churches communities in Kerala. These churches are at Kodingalore, Palayore, Kadakavu, Paravur, Kakamangalam, Niranam, Nilakal, Chayal, Kolam, and Thiruvathamkod. Half church. Thomas baptized several families, namely Pakalomadam, Sankarapuri, Kali, Kalayankal, Nedumpali, Panakamadam, Kunapili, Vazapili, Payapili, Maliakal, Patamuku, and Tayil. Other families claim to have origins almost as far back as these and the religious historian Robert Eric Freikenberg notes that, "...whatever dubious historicity may be attached to such local traditions, there can be little doubt as to their great antiquity or to their great appeal in popular imagination." It was to a land of dark people he was sent, to clothe them by baptism in white robes. His grateful dawn dispelled India's painful darkness. It was his mission to espouse India to the One Begotten. The merchant is blessed for having so great a treasure. Edessa thus became the blessed city by possessing the greatest pearl India could yield. Thomas works miracles in India, and at Edessa Thomas is destined to baptize peoples perverse and steeped in darkness, and that in the land of India. Eusebius of Caesarea quotes Origen died mid -third century as having stated that Thomas was the apostle to the Parthians, but Thomas is better known as the missionary to India through the Acts of Thomas, perhaps written as late as c. 200. 
In Edessa, where his remains were venerated, the poet Saint Ephraim died 373 wrote a hymn in which the devil cries. Into what land shall I fly from the just? I stirred up death the apostles to slay, that by their death I might escape their blows. But harder still am I now stricken, the apostle I slew in India has overtaken me in Edessa, here and there he is all himself. There went I, and there was he, here and there to my grief I find him. Saint Ephraim, a doctor of Syriac Christianity, writes in the 42nd of his Carmina Nisabina that the apostle was put to death in India, and that his remains were subsequently buried in Edessa, brought there by an unnamed merchant. A Syrian ecclesiastical calendar of an early date confirms the above and gives the merchant a name. The entry reads, The 3rd of July, Saint Thomas who was pierced with a lance in India. His body is in Urhai, Edessa, having been brought there by the merchant Kabin. A great festival. A long public tradition in Edessa honoring Thomas as the Apostle of India resulted in several surviving hymns that are attributed to Ephraim, copied in codices of the 8th and 9th centuries. References in the hymns preserve the tradition that Thomas' bones were brought from India to Edessa by a merchant, and that the relics worked miracles both in India and Edessa. A pontiff assigned his feast day, and a king and a queen erected his shrine. The Thomas traditions became embodied in Syriac liturgy, thus they were universally credited by the Christian community there. There is a legend that Thomas had met the biblical Magi on his way to India, according to Eusebius. Record, Thomas and Bartholomew were assigned to Parthia and India. The Didascalia dating from the end of the 3rd century states, India and all countries conjuring it, even to the farthest seas, received the apostolic ordinances from Judas Thomas, who was a guide and ruler in the church which he built." Moreover, there is a wealth of confirmatory information in the Syriac writings, liturgical books, and calendars of the Church of the East, not to mention the writings of the Fathers, the calendars, the sacramentaries, and the martyrologies of the Roman, Greek and Ethiopian churches. One, an early 3rd century Syriac work known as the Acts of Thomas, two, connects the Apostles' Indian ministry with two kings, one in the north and the other in the south. According to one of the legends in the Acts, Thomas was at first reluctant to accept this mission, but the Lord appeared to him in a night vision and said, Fear not, Thomas. Go away to India and proclaim the word, for my grace shall be with you. But the apostle still demurred, so the Lord overruled the stubborn disciple by ordering circumstances so compelling that he was forced to accompany an Indian merchant, Abanes, as a slave to his native place in northwest India, where he found himself in the service of the Indo-Parthian king, Gondafers. According to the Acts of Thomas, the Apostles' ministry resulted in many conversions throughout the kingdom, including the king and his brother, three. Remains of some of his buildings, influenced by Greek architecture, indicate that he was a great builder. According to the legend, Thomas was a skilled carpenter and was bidden to build a palace for the king. However, the apostle decided to teach the king a lesson by devoting the royal grant to acts of charity and thereby laying up treasure for the heavenly abode. Although little is known of the immediate growth of the church, Bardazan reports that in his time there were Christian tribes in India which claimed to have been converted by Thomas and to have books and relics to prove it, for, but at least by the year of the establishment of the Second Persian Empire 226, there were bishops of the Church of the East in northwest India Afghanistan and Baluchistan, with laymen and clergy alike engaging in missionary activity, five, aside from a small remnant of the Church of the East in Kurdistan. The only other church to maintain a distinctive identity is the St. Thomas Christian congregations along the Kerala in southwest India. According to the most ancient tradition of this church, Thomas evangelized this area and then crossed to the Karamandal coast of southeast India, where, after carrying out a second mission, he died at Chennai. Throughout the period under review, the church in India was under the jurisdiction of Edessa, which was then under the Mesopotamian Patriarchate at Seleucia Cte Siphon and later at Baghdad and Mosul. Historian Vincent A. Smith says, "...it must be admitted that a personal visit of the Apostle Thomas to South India was easily feasible in the traditional belief that he came by way of Socotra, where an ancient Christian settlement undoubtedly existed. I am now satisfied that the Christian Church of South India is extremely ancient." 
Six, Thomas is believed to have left northwest India when invasion threatened and travelled by vessel to the Malabar coast, possibly visiting southeast Arabia and Socotra en route, and landing at the former flourishing port of Muziris modern-day North Perivar and Kodingalor c. 50 AD in the company of a Jewish merchant Abanes Heben. From there he is said to have preached the gospel throughout the Malabar coast. The various churches he founded were located mainly on the Periyar River and its tributaries and along the coast, where there were Jewish colonies. In accordance with apostolic custom, Thomas ordained teachers and leaders or elders, who were reported to be the earliest ministry of the Malabar Church. <laughs> Death According to Syrian Christian tradition, St. Thomas was allegedly killed at St. Thomas Mount, in Chennai, in 72 AD and his body was interred in Mylapore. Ephraim the Syrian states that the Apostle was martyred in India, and that his relics were taken then to Edessa. This is the earliest known record of his martyrdom. The records of Barbosa from early 16th century inform that the tomb was then maintained by a Muslim who kept a lamp burning there. The San Tomi Basilica Mylapore, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India presently located at the tomb was first built in the 16th century by the Portuguese and rebuilt in the 19th century. St. Thomas Mount has been a revered site by Hindus, Muslims and Christians since at least the 16th century. In history According to Europeans and Chinese historians Thomas was killed by King Vasudeva I of the Kushan Empire. Topic. Possible travel into Indonesia Topic. According to Kurt E. Koch, Thomas the Apostle possibly travelled into Indonesia via India with Indian traders. Topic. Paraguayan legend Topic. Ancient oral tradition retained by the Guarani tribes of Paraguay claims that Tomé Marangatu the Good Thomas or Pai Tomi Father Thomas, one of the Twelve Apostles, lived among the natives preaching the Gospel and doing miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. According to the Austrian missionary and writer, F. J. Martin Dobrishofer, who spoke with the warlord of the tribe, the warlord Cacique said to me, we don't need for priests, because Holy Father Thame Thomas the Apostle walked on our homeland himself, and he taught us about the truth, praying for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Dobrishofer believed that it was almost impossible for that legend to be truthful, although, with the guidance of the almighty power of God, there was a chance for Thomas the Apostle to have arrived in Paraguayan lands, almost 150 years prior to Dobrishofer's arrival to Paraguay. Another Jesuit missionary, F.J. Antonio Ruiz de Montoya, recollected the same oral traditions from the Paraguayan tribes. In a very famous book, he wrote The Paraguayan tribes they have this very curious tradition. They claim that a very holy man, Thomas the Apostle himself, whom they call Pai Tomi, lived amongst them and preached to them the holy truth, wandering and carrying a wooden cross on his back. Despite all these legends and traditions, no credible evidence exists about St. Thomas the Apostle and his alleged journey to Paraguay and neighboring lands. The sole recorded research done about the subject was during José Gaspar Rodríguez de Francia's reign after the independence of Paraguay. This is mentioned by Franz Wissner von Morgenstern, an Austro-Hungarian engineer who served in the Paraguayan armies prior and during the Paraguayan War. According to von Morgenstern, some Paraguayan miners while working nearby some hills at the Caguazu department found some stones with ancient letters carved in them. Dictator Francia sent his finest experts to inspect those stones, and they concluded that the letters carved in those stones were Hebrew-like symbols, but they cool d.n.t. translate them nor figure out the exact date when those letters were carved. No further recorded investigations exists, and according to Wisner, people believed that the letters were made by St. Thomas the Apostle, following the tradition. Topic. Relic. Topic. Topic. Mylapur, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. Topic. 
Traditional accounts say that the Apostle Thomas preached not only in Kerala but also in other parts of southern India, and a few relics are still kept at San Tomi Basilica in Chennai, Mylapore, India. Marco Polo, the Venetian traveller and author of Description of the World, popularly known as Il Milioni, is reputed to have visited southern India in 1288 and 1292. The first date has been rejected as he was in China at the time, but the second date is generally accepted. He also stopped at Keelan on the western Malabar coast of India, where he met Syrian Christians and recorded their tradition of St. Thomas and his tomb on the eastern Karamandal coast of the country. Il Milioni, the book he dictated on his return to Europe, was on its publication condemned by the Church as a collection of impious and improbable travellers' tales. It became very popular reading in medieval Europe and inspired Spanish and Portuguese sailors to seek out the fabulous and possibly Christian India described in it. Odessa According to tradition, in 232 AD, the greater portion of relics of the Apostle Thomas are said to have been sent by an Indian king and brought from Mylapore to the city of Edessa, Mesopotamia, on which occasion his Syriac acts were written. The Indian king is named as Mazdai in Syriac sources, Mystios, and Mystius in Greek and Latin sources respectively, which has been connected to the Basdeo. On the Kushan coinage of Vasudeva I, the transition between M and B being a current one in classical sources for Indian names. The martyrologist Rabin Sleba dedicated a special day to both the Indian king, his family, and St. Thomas. Coronatio Tame Apostoli et Mystius Rex India, Johannes Eus Filius Husk Mater Tertia Coronation of Thomas the Apostle, and Mystius King of India, together with his son Johannes thought to be a Latinization of Vizen and his mother Tertia Rabin Sleba. In the 4th century, the martyrium erected over his burial place brought pilgrims to Edessa. In the 380s, Ageria described her visit in a letter she sent to her community of nuns at home Itineraria Ageriae. We arrived at Edessa in the name of Christ our God, and, on our arrival, we straightway repaired to the church and memorial of St. Thomas. There, according to custom, prayers were made and the other things that were customary in the holy places were done. We read also some things concerning St. Thomas himself. The church there is very great, very beautiful and of new construction, well worthy to be the house of God, and as there was much that I desired to see, it was necessary for me to make a three days stay there. According to St. Theodoret of Cyrus, the bones of St. Thomas were transferred by Cyrus, Bishop of Edessa, from the martyrium outside of Edessa to a church in the southwest corner of the city on the 22nd of August 394. In 441, the Magister Militum per Orientum Anatolius donated a silver coffin to hold the relics. In 522 AD, Cosmas Indicopolius, called the Alexandrian, visited the Malabar coast. He is the first traveller who mentions Syrian Christians in Malabar, in his book Christian Topography. He mentions that in the town of Kaliana, Kielan or Kolam, there was a bishop who had been consecrated in Persia. In 1144, the city was conquered by the Zengids and the shrine destroyed. Chios and Ortona after a short stay on the Greek island of Chios, on 6 September 1258, the relics were transported to the west, and now rest in the Cathedral of St. Thomas the Apostle in Ortona, Italy. However, the skull of Thomas is said to be at Monastery of St. John the Theologian on the Greek island of Patmos. Ortona's three galleys reached the island of Chios in 1258, led by General Leone Axiaiwoli. Chios was considered the island where St. Thomas, after the martyrdom in India, had been buried. A portion fought around the Peloponnese and the Aegean Islands, the other in the sea lapping at the then Syrian coast. The three galleys of Ortona moved on the second front of the war and reached the island of Chios. The tale is provided by Giambattista Delectus, physician and writer of the 16th century of Ortona. After the looting, the Navarca Ortona Leone went to pray in the main church of the island of Chios and was drawn to a chapel adorned and resplendent with lights. An elderly priest, through an interpreter informed him that in that oratory was venerated the body of St. Thomas the Apostle. Lion, filled with an unusual sweetness, gathered in deep prayer. At that moment a light hand twice invited him to come closer. 
The Navarca Leone reached out and took a bone from the largest hole of the tombstone, on which were carved the Greek letters and a halo depicted a bishop from the waist up. He was the confirmation of what he had said the old priest and that you are indeed in the presence of the Apostle's body. He went back on the galley and planned the theft for the next night, along with fellow Ruggiero Grogno. They lifted the heavy gravestone and watched the underlying relics. The wrapped in snow white cloths them laid in a wooden box stored at Ortona to the looting of 1566 and brought them aboard the galley. Lion, then, along with other comrades, he returned again in the church, took the tombstone and took her away. Just the Chinardo admiral was aware of the precious cargo moved all the sailors of the Muslim faith on other ships and ordered him to take the route to Ortona. He landed at the port of Ortona 6 September 1258. According to the story of Delectus, he was informed the abbot Jacopo responsible for Ortona Church, which predisposed full provision for hospitality felt and shared by all the people. Since then the body of the apostle and the gravestone are preserved in the crypt of the basilica. In 1259 a parchment written in Bari by the court under John Peacock contracts, the presence of five witnesses, preserved in Ortona at the diocesan library, confirming the veracity of that event, reported, as mentioned, by Giambattista Delectus, physician and writer Ortona of the 16th century. The relics resisted both the Saracen looting of 1566, that the destruction of the Nazis in the famous Battle of Ortona, fought in late December 1943. The basilica was blown up because his civic era's tower lookout point considered by the Allies, who were coming by sea from San Vito Chiatino. The relics, together with the treasure of St. Thomas, were intended, according to the command of the Germans, to be sold, but the monks tumularono inside the bell tower, the only surviving part of the semi-ruined church. Tombstone of Thomas, brought to Ortona from Chios along with the relics of the Apostle, is currently preserved in the crypt of St. Thomas Basilica, behind the altar. The urn containing the bones instead is placed under the altar. It is the cover of a fake coffin, fairly widespread burial form in the early Christian world, as the top of a tomb of less expensive material. The plaque has an inscription and a bas-relief that refer, in many respects, to the Syro-Mesopotamian. Tombstone Thomas the Apostle on inclusion can be read, in Greek characters unchal, the expression, Osios Thomas, that Saint Thomas. It can be dated from the point of view paleographic and lexical to the 3rd-5th century, a time when the term osios is still used as a synonym of agios in that holy as he that is in the grace of God and is inserted in the church. The two vocabulary, therefore, indicate the Christians. In the particular case of St. Thomas's plaque, then, the word osios can easily be the translation of the word Syriac mar lord, attributed in the ancient world, but also to the present day, is a saint to be a bishop. Iraq The finger bones of St. Thomas were discovered during restoration work at the Church of St. Thomas in Mosul, Iraq in 1964, and were housed there until the fall of Mosul, after which the relics were transferred to the Monastery of St. Matthew on 17 June 2014. Historical references a number of early Christian writings written during centuries immediately following the First Ecumenical Council of 325 mention Thomas's mission. <laughs> Acts of Thomas the main source is the apocryphal Acts of Thomas, sometimes called by its full name the Acts of Judas Thomas, written circa 180–230 AD, CE. These are generally regarded by various Christian religions as apocryphal, or even heretical. The two centuries that lapsed between the life of the Apostle and the recording of this work cast doubt on their authenticity. According to the text, following the Ascension, the Apostles cast lots as to where each should go and Thomas drew India. A man named Haban recruited or enslaved Thomas to work as a builder and architect, on behalf of King Gondifers, the ruler of the Indo-Parthian kingdom. The journey to India is described in detail. After a long period working at the royal court at ancient Taxila, Thomas ordained leaders for a church there. He left in a chariot for a kingdom named Mazdai possibly Musiris, in South India. The king, Mizdius or Mizdios, was infuriated when Thomas converted the Queen Tertia, the king. S. son Juzanes, sister-in-law Princess Migdonia and her friend Marcia. 
Misdius led St. Thomas outside the city and ordered four soldiers to take him to the nearby hill, where the soldiers speared Thomas and killed him. After Thomas's death, Cyphorus was elected the first presbyter of Mazdae by the surviving converts, while Jusanes was the first deacon. The names Mystius, Tertia, Jusanes, Cyphorus, Marcia, and Migdonia c. F. Migdonia, a province of Mesopotamia, may suggest Greek descent or, or cultural influences. Greek traders had long visited Musiris. Greek kingdoms in northern India and Bactria, founded by Alexander the Great, were vassals of the Indo Parthians. According to some accounts, Vasudeva I, Kushan Emperor circa 191 232 AD, CE, reputedly repatriated the bones of Thomas from Mylapore to Edessa. Doctrine of the Apostles Third century, church represented, Syrian. After the death of the apostles there were guides and rulers in the churches. They again at their deaths also committed and delivered to their disciples after them everything which they had received from the apostles, also what Judas Thomas had written from India. India and all its own countries, and those bordering on it, even to the farther sea, received the apostle hand of priesthood from Judas Thomas, who was guide and ruler in the church which he built and ministered there. In what follows the whole Persia of the Assyrians and Medes, and of the countries round about Babylon, even to the borders of the Indians and even to the country of Gog and Magog are said to have received the apostles. Hand of priesthood from Aegeus the disciple of Adius Origin Topic. Third century 185 to 254, quoted in Eusebius, church represented, Alexandrian, Greek biographical. Christian philosopher, B. Egypt, Origen taught with great acclaim in Alexandria and then in Caesarea. He is the first known writer to record the casting of lots by the apostles. Origen's original work has been lost, but his statement about Parthia falling to Thomas has been preserved by Eusebius. Origen, in the third chapter of his commentary on Genesis, says that, according to tradition, Thomas's allotted field of labor was Parthia. Eusebius Eusebius of Caesarea, 4th century died 340, church represented, Alexandrian, Greek biographical quoting Origen, Eusebius says. When the holy apostles and disciples of our Saviour were scattered over all the world, Thomas, so the tradition has it, obtained as his portion Parthia. Judas, who is also called Thomas, has a role in the legend of King Abgar of Edessa Urfa, for having sent Thaddeus to preach in Edessa after the Ascension Eusebius, Historia Ecclesia 1.13, 3.1, Ephraim the Syrian also recounts this legend. Ephraim the Syrian Topic. Ephraim, 4th century, church represented, Syrian biographical many devotional hymns composed by Saint Ephraim bear witness to the Edessan Church's strong conviction concerning Saint Thomas's Indian apostolate. There the devil speaks of Saint Thomas as, the apostle I slew in India. Also, the merchant brought the bones to Edessa. Another hymn eulogizing St. Thomas reads, "...the bones the merchant hath brought in his several journeyings to India, and thence on his return, all riches, which there he found, dirt in his eyes he did repute when to thy sacred bones compared." In yet another hymn Ephraim speaks of the mission of Thomas, "...the earth darkened with sacrifices fumes to illuminate. A land of people dark fell to thy lot. A tainted land Thomas has purified." India's dark night was flooded with light by Thomas. Topic: <inaudible> Gregory of Nazianzus. Topic: Gregory of Nazianzus, fourth century, died 389. Church represented Alexandrian. Biographical note: Gregory of Nazianzus was born AD 330, consecrated a bishop by his friend Saint Basil. In 372, his father, the bishop of Nazianzus, induced him to share his charge. 
In 379 the people of Constantinople called him to be their bishop. By the Orthodox Church he is emphatically called the theologian. What, were not the apostles strangers amidst the many nations and countries over which they spread themselves? Peter indeed may have belonged to Judea, but what had Paul in common with the Gentiles, Luke with Achaia, Andrew with Epirus, John with Ephesus, Thomas with India, Mark with Italy? <laughs> Ambrose of Milan Fourth century died 397, church represented, western. Biographical note, St. Ambrose was thoroughly acquainted with the Greek and Latin classics, and had a good deal of information on India and Indians. He speaks of the gymnosophists of India, the Indian Ocean, the river Ganges etc., a number of times. This admitted of the apostles being sent without delay according to the saying of our Lord Jesus, even those kingdoms which were shut out by rugged mountains became accessible to them, as India to Thomas, Persia to Matthew. <laughs> Gregory of Tours Saint Gregory of Tours died 594 Saint Gregory's testimony. Thomas the Apostle, according to the narrative of his martyrdom is stated to have suffered in India. His holy remains corpus, after a long interval of time, were removed to the city of Edessa in Syria and there interred. In that part of India where they first rested, stand a monastery and a church of striking dimensions, elaborately adorned and designed. This Theodore, who had been to the place, narrated to us. Topic. Writings Topic. Let none read the Gospel according to Thomas, for it is the work, not of one of the twelve apostles, but of one of Manny's three wicked disciples. In the first two centuries of the Christian era, a number of writings were circulated. It is unclear now why Thomas was seen as an authority for doctrine, although this belief is documented in Gnostic groups as early as the Pistis Sophia. In that Gnostic work, Mary Magdalene one of the disciples says, Now at this time, my Lord, hear, so that I speak openly, for thou hast said to us, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Concerning the word which thou didst say to Philip, Thou and Thomas and Matthew are the three to whom it has been given, to write every word of the kingdom of the light, and to bear witness to them. Hear now that I give the interpretation of these words. It is this which thy light power once prophesied through Moses. Through two and three witnesses everything will be established. The three witnesses are Philip and Thomas and Matthew." An early, non-Gnostic tradition may lie behind this statement, which also emphasizes the primacy of the Gospel of Matthew in its Aramaic form, over the other canonical three. Besides the Acts of Thomas there was a widely circulated infancy Gospel of Thomas probably written in the later 2nd century, and probably also in Syria, which relates the miraculous events and prodigies of Jesus' boyhood. This is the document which tells for the first time the familiar legend of the twelve sparrows which Jesus, at the age of five, fashioned from clay on the Sabbath day, which took wing and flew away. The earliest manuscript of this work is a 6th century one in Syriac. This gospel was first referred to by Irenaeus, Ron Cameron notes. In his citation, Irenaeus first quotes a non-canonical story that circulated about the childhood of Jesus and then goes directly on to quote a passage from the infancy narrative of the Gospel of Luke. Since the infancy Gospel of Thomas records both of these stories, in relative close proximity to one another, it is possible that the apocryphal writing cited by Irenaeus is, in fact, what is now known as the infancy Gospel of Thomas. Because of the complexities of the manuscript tradition, however, there is no certainty as to when the stories of the infancy Gospel of Thomas began to be written down. The best known in modern times of these documents is the Sayings document that is being called the Gospel of Thomas, a noncanonical work whose date is disputed. The opening line claims it is the work of Didymos Judas Thomas, whose identity is unknown. This work was discovered in a Coptic translation in 1945 at the Egyptian village of Nag Hammadi, near the site of the monastery of Chenobauskian. Once the Coptic text was published, scholars recognized that an earlier Greek translation had been published from fragments of papyrus found at Oxyrhynchus in the 1890s. 
Topic: <laughs> St. Thomas Cross. Topic: In the 16th century work Hornada, Antonio Gouveia writes of ornate crosses known as St. Thomas crosses. It is also known as Nasrani Menorah or Mar Thomas Sliba. These crosses are believed to date from the 6th century as per the tradition and are found in a number of churches in Kerala, Mylapore and Goa. Hornada is the oldest known written document to refer to this type of cross as a St. Thomas cross. Gouveia also writes about the veneration of the cross at Kranganur, referring to the cross as cross of Christians. It is widely perceived as the symbol of St. Thomas Christians. There are several interpretations of the Nasrani symbol. The interpretation based on Christian Jewish tradition assumes that its design was based on Jewish menorah, an ancient symbol of the Hebrews, which consists of seven branch lamp stand candelabra. The interpretation based on local culture states that the cross without the figure of Jesus and with flowery arms symbolizing joyfulness points to the resurrection theology of St. Paul. The Holy Spirit on the top represents the role of Holy Spirit in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The lotus symbolizing Buddhism and the cross over it shows that Christianity was established in the land of Buddha. The three steps indicate Calvary and the rivulets, channels of grace flowing from the cross. Topic see also topic Gospel of Barnabas List of Patriarchs of the Church of the East Mar Thoma Syrian Church St. Thomas of Mylapur Sao Tome Street Thomas's Church for a listing of all churches and chapel named in his honor throne of St. Thomas topic References topic, topic Bibliography topic Harvey, Susan Ashbrook 2005. Julian Saba and Early Christianity. Wilderness, Essays in Honor of Francis Young. A and C Black. pp. 120-134. Topic further reading Topic A.C. Perumalil, The Apostles in India, Patna, India, XTTI, 1971. George Manashari, ed., The St. Thomas Christian Encyclopedia of India, especially. Volume 2, 1973. George Manashari, ed., The Nazranis, Indian Church History Classics, Volume 1, 1998, especially. Books fully reproduced in it by Mackenzie, Medlicott, Farquhar, and many others. Glenn W. Most, Doubting Thomas. Cambridge, Massachusetts, London, Harvard University Press, 2005 A Study in the Reception of Thomas's Story in Literature and Art. Charles Nickel, The Other Thomas, London Review of Books Vol. 34 No. 21 8 November 2012, pages 39-43. Pierre Perrier and Walter Xavier. Thomas von L'Eglise en Chine, 65 to 68 App J C, Paris, Jubilee, 2008. ISBN 9 trillion 782 billion 866 million 794 thousand 828. Topic external links topic St. Thomas the Apostle, checked equals true apostle in India, the tomb of the Apostle Mylapore Santhome Church built over the tomb of St. Thomas Jacobite Syrian Christian Church Mylapore Diocese of Jacobite Syrian Church St. Thomas Indian Orthodox Church, Greater Washington A.E. Medlicott, India and the Apostle Thomas, London 1905 E-text. Niranam Valiyapali and St. Thomas The Nasrani Syrian Christians Network Official site of the Malankara Mar Thoma Syrian Church Mar Thoma Churches all over the world Passages to India Orthodox Church Portal St. Thomas, Apostle of India The Little Gospel of St. Thomas Sri Lankan Film Dramatization